In the last video, I explained why structural modeling is important. And here I'm going to describe how we implement structural modeling in VHDL. So over here on the left, I've drawn the diagram from the previous video and just cleaned it up a little bit and annotated it a little more nicely. Uh, so if you want to know what this is doing, uh, go watch the previous video if you haven't already. And over on the right, I've started implementing VHDL code for each of these modules. So every module here is going to have a corresponding entity and each entity is going to live in its own file. So timer has an entity here, timer. I haven't drawn, written out the architecture here. Uh, we don't, we're not really concerned with what the architecture of these individual blocks is. For now, those are just black boxes and we're going to compose them together. Right? We could maybe have written them earlier or maybe somebody else is writing them or maybe some vendor is providing those pieces for us. And we're just trying to integrate them all together to make this clock module. And so here, for example, timer has two outputs. So it's got an hour output, which is five bits, uh, representing the hour from zero to 23. It's got a minute output, which is six bits to represent zero to 59. And then those are gonna get fed into the digit splitter, which feeds a seven segment and so forth. Okay, so let's start with an empty clock module. And now we've just gotta fill this in. Okay, so first thing to do is what are all of the ports of this clock module. Again, th this is just saying, let's just describe the periphery of this module, what comes in and what goes out. Well, there aren't any inputs, so the timer is actually just generating stuff on its own. And then for outputs, we've got these four outputs from the seven segment displays. Right, they're gonna need some names, so let's just call them, say, D0 through D3 for, for different digits. Okay, now we can go ahead and write the port list in the entity here. So we say port and the D0 is an output and it is, in this case, LEDs is a seven bit bus. So there, there's seven wires here. There's no numeric significance to it. So these are gonna be standard logic, uh, standard logic vector because it's a bus and we can label it six down to zero. Need our semicolon there, and then we need three more copies. Remember the last one doesn't have a semicolon. The end of the port list does have a semicolon. Two. Okay, so there's all of our ports for this top clock module. Okay, now we need to go ahead and instantiate this timer module. So we want to, we've already described how this thing works. We've, we've got the entity that exists, but we need to somehow take one of those and just put it in our design here. Okay. So to do that, first we're going to need a component declaration. So the component declaration is a lot like a function declaration in C or C++. Um, so VHDL works in the same way um, Again, it's sort of similar vintage to C and C++, where it tries to read a single file at a time. It needs all of the information to compile this file uh, to be in that file. So if I'm, I'm going to use a component. It's not going to go look at other files and search around on my hard drive to find stuff. It's just going to look at this, this file. So I've got to declare that component before I can use it. Now, unfortunately, unlike you know C does the same thing, but Unlike C, VHDL doesn't have any pound include by default. So if I want to grab this timer object, I've actually just got to copy and paste the entity here into this part of my architecture. So component declarations go in the architecture. So after the architecture synth of clock is, but before the begin here. Uh, signals will also go in here in a minute. Okay, and so instead of entity though, this is a component. And then instead of end whatever the entity name is, I just put end component here. And everything else stays the same. So again, this is tedious and annoying, but just, just suck it up and get used to it. Uh, this is how VHDL is. Okay, so that's our declaration. So now inside the architecture, right, we've just said we haven't with this declaration, we've just said that this component exists that 
somewhere else this thing is defined and we can use it. We haven't actually made a copy of it in our design yet. And so to do that, we will write the line. Uh, we've got to come up with some name. So let's put, uh, we'll just call this timer T. So it's name in our module will just be T. Right. And then here we'll say T is a timer. And so now that will, in our module, our clock module, make a copy, an instance, or we would say it instantiates a timer object and we're gonna call it T. We now we have to describe what T is connected to. And so T has got these two outputs, what are they gonna connect to? Well, we've gotta make some signals to connect that stuff to. So let's go ahead and give these signals names. So let's call this hour. And let's call this one minute. So not very creative names, but that's probably a good thing. Okay, so we're gonna have signals inside our clock module called hour, called minute. And then we're gonna connect the timer's signal called hour to hour, and the timer signal called minute to minute. So since both of these signals are unsigned, then we'll wanna declare them the same way. So let's say signal hour is unsigned four down to zero. And signal minute is unsigned five down to zero. Okay, now that we've done that, we can actually connect this wire we've called hour to the port of timer called hour. And we'll do that with a port map. Let's say port map. And here now we can say hour. So the when I say hour here the first time, that's referring to the port of timer called hour, and that's gonna connect to our signal called hour. And likewise, the port called minute is gonna connect to our signal called minute. Okay, so now we've created this timer. We've now created each of these wires here. And we've called one of them hour, we've called one of them minute. Let's go ahead and instantiate the digit splitter. So again, we're gonna have to go grab the digit splitter over here. And we have to paste that in. And again, we're gonna change entity to component and write end component at the end. Okay, now we're gonna need two different digit splitters. So again, let's give them some names. Uh, so let's call this hour split and the bottom one minute split. So that we've got unique names to refer to these two things. And then we can go ahead and write it. So our split is a digit splitter. And then we're gonna have to do the port map here. And we'll, we'll fill that in in a minute. So let's go ahead and do the minute split. Okay, so the first port is this value port that's going in. So in the case of minute, um, the port map, so we've got our signal called minute, so value is gonna connect to minute. And then upper, we're gonna leave disconnected for the moment, and lower, we're gonna leave disconnected as well. 
And so both upper and lower refer to these signals over here. We're going to give them the names in a minute and then hook them up finally when we're done. OK, but let's go back to connecting the value here. So if I go value for the hour splitter is just going to be hour. Um, but if you actually try to do this, then you're going to run into a problem. Uh, specifically, that we defined hour here to be an unsigned of 4 down to 0. So it's got 5 bits, whereas the value here in the digit splitter has to be 6 bits. And, and again, unlike C, where it says, eh, I think I know what you mean. I'll go ahead and just fill in a 0 in that extra bit, and it'll all be OK. Um, VHDL is extremely picky about types that you can't just leave some bits disconnected, or uh, you, can, you, know, you can't even, con if I've defined something to be unsigned, meaning it has numeric significance, I can't just throw that into a standard logic vector, which is essentially the same thing, but is not, does not have any numeric significance. So VHDL is going to be super picky about this. Uh, and that's ultimately a good thing. It's, it's annoying, um, but it means that we get more syntax and compiler errors and fewer nasty bugs further down the line. OK, so how do we fix that, though? We need to get like one extra bit. Um, so let's go ahead and define an extra signal. So we'll call this, say, hour plus, that will actually be the five bits that we can then connect into the digit splitter. So instead of hour, we're going to put hour plus. So we've got our hour signal coming out of the timer. We're just going to take one more bit here and add that to the bus. So at this point, it's six bits. And this extra bit, we'll just tack onto the top, the most significant place, and just give that the value zero. OK, so to do that, we've got our plus. And that's our full signal. And we can just write a continuous assignment that says our plus gets the value of zero and use the ampersand for concatenation plus hour. OK, so now I'm feeding the hour and the minute into each of the digit splitters. And now I've got to deal with these upper and lower signals coming out. OK, and so we're, again, we're going to need names for these signals. So let's go ahead and make up some names. So let's call them a V0 through V3 as the corresponding values here. OK, so we've got those. And now let's go ahead and define them in the code. So signal v0 is, in this case, this is a 4-bit unsigned value. So unsigned 3 down to 0. And 2, 3. And now we just need to connect each of these signals to the appropriate output. So v0 is going to be connected to the minute split lower. So minute split lower is going to be v0. Minute split upper is going to be v1. Hour split lower will be v2. And upper will be v3. OK, so we've connected now each of these wires. And we are ready. I should say we, we've connected each of these wires, I should say, to the digit splitter. We haven't connected them to the segment segment part yet. And we'll do that next. OK, so we need four seven segment modules. So we can call, again, we'll just, we got to label each of these. So we'll call this seven seg zero. 7 seg 1, 7 seg 2, and 7 seg 3. And then we will connect those up to the appropriate wires. OK, so 7 seg 0 is a 7 segment component, component, which we have not copied in yet. So let's grab that. and. Again, as before, we'll paste the component in here. And change, again, change entity to component, add end component at the end, and otherwise we're good to go. 
Okay, again, value is an unsigned. So it says five down to zero. That should be three down to zero. Let's go ahead and change that as well. So seven sag is one of these components we just pulled in. Again, it's got value, four bits coming in. LEDs is seven bits going out. And so we can do the port map. So value for this seven seg zero is gonna be D zero. And then the LEDs on the other side is gonna connect directly to D zero. So LEDs. And we can use D zero because it was defined up at the top as one of the ports of this overall clock module. All right, so seven, say one, two, three, and again, one, two, three, three, two. Okay, and we've also connected the outputs here, so I'll go ahead and just highlight those just to mark off that we've done everything. So at this point, we've created all of the modules and highlighted all the wires. We've wired them up both from their outputs back to their inputs. And then these final LED outputs are wired to outputs of the overall module. So we've succeeded in writing the HDL code that's going to instantiate all seven of these submodules and then connect out all the wires up. And when we synthesize this, the synthesis tool will synthesize each of the submodules and then synthesize the whole thing together. And then it attempts to try to sort of mash everything into one blob and minimize the log logic as much as it possibly can and resulting in an overall optimized design.